All right, so we are going to do an alcohol ink tutorial. I'm going to attempt to somewhat duplicate this 30 ounce onto a 20 ounce. I already have it I'm base painted white. It's my go-to color. I've done it with yellow and pale pinks before. It just really depends on what's going on there. Um, and I'm going to put on my fresh gloves because my hands were disgustingly covered with epoxy on the last set of gloves. And I didn't want to touch that cup. Um, so I have already mixed up 30 milliliters of epoxy and I've got it ready to rock and roll. I'm going to scrape off these little bubbles in just a second before we get started. Um, my turner thinks it's dying so it makes kind of this weird noise every once in a while. And it has kind of a consistent whining. So it's kind of like my third kid. So, I'm going to scrape off this air bubble real quick. Again, like I showed in the other video, I like to um, use this flat part here. I feel like it just picks up those bubbles really, really well. I mean, you can blast them with a heat gun, but my shed is such a small workspace that I'm really trying not to use heat if I don't have to. Anytime I do use heat though, I throw on my uh, respirator and I can put that link in the notes about the um, video. I know some people are way more sensitive than others uh, to the epoxy fumes and I definitely can't get it on my skin because I have eczema already and so that really just flares it up. So I start with kind of a thinner layer. I know some people just slather it so so thick to begin with. I personally like to put it on thin just so I can make sure that I get every area and then I'll throw it on a little thicker and then I'll kind of let it rest I guess you could say kind of flatten out. Um, while I'm showing what inks I used. But just make sure you get all the spots on there. You don't want any dry spots because it'll make like weird bald spots in your ink swirls. This is just a built brand from Walmart. I've got a few others that I got from another actual wholesaler. But this one was primed and ready, and I wanted to get started getting my videos going, so this is what we've got. Luckily, that built logo that was right there towards the bottom, it's not that visible under inks. That right there, that little logo right there, it, I mean, you can kind of see it, but just like with RTIC or if you were to do a Yeti without... Um, putting vinyl over the logo so that it didn't end up epoxying over it. Uh, don't forget to do your bottoms unless you like to tape off. I personally don't like taping off because I really suck at getting it straight and um, I just like the look personally but I mean it's total personal preference whatever you prefer. But now I've got it all covered up. Every once in a while you'll see a dry spot where the epoxy just didn't adhere to it. And um, just keep rubbing it in. Eventually, it'll kind of flatten out and do its thing and adhere on there. But I like to just pour kind of a skinny little line on there. Kind of give me a little extra goo. You want lots of epoxy on these or you will not get the movement. You can get movement with heat which I'll use my heat gun in just a little bit, just to kind of make it a little bit more prominent. But um, you can get pretty decent movement just by going a little heavy handed with the epoxy. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for the moment. So out of the 30 milliliters, I have like well, seven and a half left. So that's a pretty decent coverage there. Probably too much, but that's all right. So, Anyways, um, I like to just kind of flatten it out. But sometimes the little drizzling effect, it doesn't flatten out for you. Make sure and get all the way to the rim because that um, is already kind of hard enough to get the inks on. So you want to make sure you don't have 
any dry spots at the rim. All right, so I'm going to let that kind of turn for a minute. Wrap off my finger here. I'm gonna let that turn for a minute, kind of flatten out, even out. Weird bubble bump thing there. Um, and then I'll show what inks I use. I mostly use Pinata brand, but I did have to get a different one the other day, um, a Tim Holtz brand, just because I really needed a brighter one. But on this cup, I've got the blue, the bright green, purple, pink, and orange. That's really all I used. Uh, sometimes I'll do a little bit of white, and I think I actually do have white in here because I can kind of see a little swirl effect in there, um, right in there. So I'll grab the white real quick before I get started. Um, I've done some before where I did literally a drop of white in every single colored drop, and that turned out really pretty and really vibrant. Um, but this one is the Tim Holtz. It's called Botanical. It's the brighter green. And then everything else is from my pinata kit that I bought when I first started doing cups. I haven't run out of any colors yet, uh, except for I'm almost out of the black. So I've got the Calabaza Orange, Baja Blue, Passion Purple, and Senorita Magenta. I'm going to grab my white real quick. If you're gonna do swirls that you want vertical movement, not just horizontal movement, make sure that your arm here is long enough because um, I know some people have it really, really on there. I have a little spinet machine that I got at Michael's and that's all right, but I literally have to pick that machine up since it doesn't have a detachable arm. I literally pick that machine up to do what I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So anyways, it's been turning for a minute. We've got it probably pretty level. I'm just taking the lids off of everything really quickly to make it easier. Um, make sure you don't do this with your nice clothes on, which is really good advice that I'm not following because I have on my favorite jeans right now and a brand new t-shirt. So I'm just going to be extra, extra careful. But um, anyways, once it's kind of flattened down and it's had a minute, those little flecks that you see on there are rogue glitter because glitter's the devil and it goes everywhere. So you literally just put drops, sporadic, random, not really in any pattern. See that drop kind of bounced right off. I don't know why it does that, but it's kind of cool that that's how I've ruined a couple of things. Don't forget to drop it where it ends up on the bottom as well. And then once you get, like if you want more of one color rather than another, don't be afraid to add it on there. It's not a big deal at all. Um, I tend to gravitate towards pink, purple, and blue the most. Those are kind of my go-to colors just because I love them so much. I've done some cups before where they, um, I put a really, really fine glitter in the epoxy. And that turned out really pretty without it being overwhelmingly shiny. And that actually sold almost immediately. I put it on Facebook Marketplace. There's another drop that just kind of kamikaze right off of there. So just kind of filling that in. I forgot to do the bottom for the pink. I can do that really quickly. Don't bother putting the lids on any of your inks because um, you'll end up finding bald spots that you want to address. And that drop didn't even touch the bottom. Good gravy. Um, throw a little bit of orange. Mm, I missed a good blue spot. That's good. I try and make them somewhat equal in spacing as far as not having all pink in one area or all orange in one area or no color in a certain area. Um you can go back and add it later but you can already see that these are starting to spread and swirl and move which is what we're wanting i really like this green i was going for a bright green not too long ago and this definitely hit the spot i 
I did a great ink swirl with some cool uh, Nordic characters on it. Characters, I don't know what they are, but they look cool on a cup, and she loved it, so that's really all that matters. <laughs> so, that is about all I'm going to do right this minute. So, now I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit of white on there, because I feel like it makes some of the colors more vibrant. And just put it right in the middle of what's going on. Kind of tinker around here and there. I like to go ahead and just do a little bit around there. I feel like the tops and bottoms get the most swirl effect. And so, um, I try and go a little heavy handed in the middle, but I'm, let me add a little bit more white right there. So I'm gonna let this turn for just a minute and then I'll, um, I'll pause it and then I will go to the next step in just a second. Okay, so they've been swirling for a couple minutes. I'm about to get real obnoxious. This is just an embossing gun from the scrapbook section at Joann's. Used a half off coupon, so I probably paid seven or eight bucks for it. You can tell it's seen its days of alcohol inks because it's all over. This thing is covered in epoxy. It's disgusting, but I don't really care. Uh, nobody else sees it but y'all. Um, so I'm just gonna hit this with heat, so it's gonna be really obnoxious for a minute. So you may wanna turn down your volume for just a minute, um, and then I'll show you kind of what I do from there. If you get too close to the epoxy with your heat, it will scorch it and it will make it not move properly and it will cure funny. Um, epoxy doesn't dry, it cures, and so there's a lot of factors at play. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't forget the bottom. It needs love too. Now's a good time that if you're seeing any bald spots that you missed, like I did, to go ahead and drop on the inks. It's not gonna really hurt anything because it's so early in the process that it's gonna work its way back into the mix. Um, it's just, if you get too many dark colors, you'll end up with mostly black on your cup. And I got a lot of white right there, so I'm gonna throw a little color in that one. So I'm gonna heat it just a little bit longer. Okay, so it's really, really runny right now. Um, you can kind of see a few patches here and there where it's kind of dry, but not really. It's almost like the epoxy doesn't want to move, but that's all right. We can work with that in a minute. So I'm going to actually take this off of the turner. And I did not come up with this method. Um, I think her name is Alicia. A-L-E-E-S-E-Y-A, -E -E I think. So if you'll search Alicia method on whatever Facebook groups you're in, do the hashtag, you'll probably find, um, she's the first person that I'm aware of doing it. So I'm just kind of taking my own little spin on that. Kind of up and down, swirling it. And then I'm gonna let it swirl for a little longer. I like to get all the way to the bottom. Make sure you have something on the bottom because that just dripped. Uh, so make sure you have something on the bottom, but if you don't do the up and down motion, you will not get those swirls vertical like that. You'll only get horizontal lines with very, very little um, vertical movement. Um, depending on if I'm getting movement or not, sometimes I'll let it rotate for a while and then take it off or heat it back up, take it off and then do it again just because I'm not happy with 
it wasn't busy enough, I guess is a good word. But doing that vertical kind of gives you that right there. And all of that little, looks like waves and stuff. Um, so that's that white is starting to kind of blend in. And then once it's back on the turner, it'll continue to move. And if you have one of the turners that can adjust speed wise, that's kind of nice because then you can uh, manipulate how much it's moving. The slower you go, the faster that's going to, um, uh, the more it's going to move because it'll be a slower movement. So it'll go slower there versus the faster. Sometimes it doesn't have enough time to move before it gets uh, spun around to the other side. So I'm going to put this back on the turner for a minute. Just kind of leave it be. That's kind of what we're working with right now. And then I might throw some fine glitter in the top coat of this. We'll see. But uh, anyways, so I'm going to screw that back on. I'm going to let it turn for a few minutes and then see how it looks. I might heat it up and kind of hit it again with a little bit more movement. But you can kind of see the um, placement there. All the swirls and stuff are kind of doing their thing. Part of why you don't want to wear good clothes is because sometimes uh, it drips and it does weird ways of movement that it ends up on you even though you don't know how that happened. So anyways, I'm going to pause the video and see how it looks in a few minutes. Okay, so this has been turning for, I don't know, a little over five minutes. Um, I've got just a couple of spots that don't really feel like they have any movement. Not as much movement as I want. So I'm going to take this off. Normally, I would throw my mask on when I'm heating this, but I can't do that while I'm talking. So I'm just going to do a little bit... Like I said, if you get too close, you can scorch it. You can also use the embossing gun to kind of send it the direction you want a little bit. Not a whole lot. I'm just trying to get some of this area more covered, but I don't know that that's going to happen. But that's okay because these are all different, all unique. Their flaws are what make them so cool. And you can just kind of maneuver it when you feel like it's getting too vertical or too horizontal. Just do something about it. Just make sure you're working over a protected surface because um, if you're working like in your kitchen or whatever, for one, make sure you have good ventilation. I've got the windows open on my shed right now and uh, I'm about to walk out of here for a bit. Anyways, we've got some really pretty swirls right here. Those will not look like that in a little while. The other cup that I showed earlier, it looked like it had a frog of green. It was so perfectly shaped like a frog and that it um, ended up maneuvering completely different. Now it just looks like that little blob right there by my thumb. So anyway, so uh, you can maneuver it all you want. Just make sure that you're working over a protected surface. Keep an eye on this area right here. I can get back in camera right here because it will drip off the edge when you're holding it that direction and it will drip off this edge uh, when you're holding it up and down this way. So sorry I got that off camera a little bit too much but man that is so pretty. That is not going to look like that in an hour but that's all right because it's still going to be really awesome. But all those white spots that we had on there are now kind of integrated into those colors so we don't have to uh, worry about having just a big old white spot in the middle of the color, which is kind of weird looking sometimes. You do end up getting a little bit of bald areas on occasion. Um, 
I personally have no issues tapping it with my finger. That's how I get some of my cooler effects, but um, not everybody does that, but man, it's so cool looking right now. Anyways, I'm gonna put that back on the turner. We're gonna let that sit for a little while. I ended up having a little leftover epoxy, so uh, before that goes bad, I'm going to mix some glitter in this guy. Like I said, it was at seven and a half milliliters. I'm gonna put my next favorite glitter in there, which is called Graffiti. It's so cute. And I'll just pour that into some random like megaphone or something. And I'll show that in a little bit. So this has been turning for about an hour now. It's got a couple of spots that aren't super swirly like some of the others, but overall it's really pretty. If I do a decal, this is where I'll do it, right there where all that blue is. Um, but overall it's really pretty and it's just so bright. The pictures don't do it justice, but seeing all those little swirls right there, it just gives it a lot of character and um, just different, makes it unique. The built logo is about to spin around right there. It's not super duper noticeable, kind of blends in, not too bad. Uh, but these guys, these colors just swirled really pretty together. So anyways, from this point on, I will do a final coat of epoxy, or excuse me, a, a coat of epoxy, and then maybe I'll end up doing a decal. We'll see. I'm getting ready for a craft show, so I might just take it as is, kind of see what happens. So uh, anyways, that's an option that you have, but alcohol inks are so great because they're so different and you can do so many different options. Uh, including, I'll kind of turn the camera to my mess over here. This is a fire themed. It's going to have a fireman logo on it. Or excuse me, a fire station logo. This one is red, a darker yellow, orange, brown, and blacks. So since it's not in the light, it's not really very vibrant. But your options are kind of endless. So anyways... So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to check frequently and answer any questions. I'm not an expert by any sense of the term, but I've got a few under my belt, so I feel like I've got a pretty decent amount of knowledge, but definitely not compared to some. So stay tuned for the next videos. I'll be doing a little bit of everything. If you have any special requests, Please uh, don't let, don't hesitate to let me know. I'll see what I can accommodate. Have a good one.